Welcome back to another week of UMass Yak Back. Now, be kind to us. We're riding the wave of death that is post Hollow weekend. Our topics today are going to include a UMass student sit in by some grad students, Kevin Spacey, he's making headlines. And lastly, we'll be talking about the sweet wave of death that I had mentioned, Hollow weekend. So stick around and we'll be right back. Welcome back to UMass Yak Back. So first, we're going to be talking about a UMass student sit-in by some grad students that happened this week. To talk about that, we have Kate, Tyler, and Sean. So who can fill us in on this happening at UMass this past week? I, I can try. Thank you. So uh, graduate students at UMass uh, have been upset recently because they're struggling to just cover their basic needs like food and rent. So the, uh, the, uni the union for uh, UMass graduate students is actually uh, organized a protest in front of the administration building uh, asking for a 18% wage increase for uh, all jobs that are giving to graduate students. Yeah, so basically that's the main points of the situation that was happening. Um, the grad students were in front of Whitmore and a few of the other administrative buildings where they organized um, a sit-in and one of the grad students that kind of led the group, not necessarily a union organizer, but he found that it wasn't really productive. They did talk to um, one of the administrators and the conversation wasn't super productive, but yeah, basic argument being that grad students here at UMass are lending their time and expertise to the school in exchange for an education, um, but they're not having their basic needs met when it comes to housing and food. Um, so they're trying to make UMass one of the number one schools in this area, but they're not being properly compensated. So um, thoughts on this? Do you feel like they're justified in their needs. I mean, our minimum wage in Massachusetts is decent. So, what do you think? Um, I mean, grad students do so much of the, you know, brunt labor for the, you know, the university for research. They do a lot of, you know, the sort of repetitive lab work. They, you know, TA the classes, which is important. They do um, a lot of the things that keep the campus running. So it makes sense that. And you know, they deserve to be paid for the work that they do and paid well. Like, um, it's just a frustrating thing all around because UMass needs more money just in general. Mm -hmm. um, like, there are a lot of places, a lot of groups in UMass that deserve to get more money and uh, just aren't. Yeah, and ones that get a lot of money that don't, like Eisenberg, but that's just me. That's yeah, me. we are, we know with the whole um, linguistics, linguistics department and the fact that Bartlett is crumbling here, um, that number one, we feel like UMass as a state institution doesn't get enough money in general. Um, I know we have the stigmas of like previous generations and the party culture here, but we're really moving away from that and we're a top research university. And also, we're not doing too bad in the English and communications department. Um, so it is definitely frustrating. And I know you had also said, I don't know if you can speak to this experience, but being a senior and thinking about moving forward and stuff, um, you kind of had, this might resonate with you potentially going into grad school. For sure. Yeah, I definitely plan to go to grad school after, after I graduate, you know, directly afterwards because, you know, the yeah the fear the fear is that you know you can't you obviously aren't working enough to cover you know your costs in grad school like I feel like the whole point of grad school like used to be that you know you pay for undergrad but then in grad school it's 
you know, you're getting paid to do the work that you learned how to do to pay your way through school. And that's just really hard to do right now, especially, and that's where the wage hike is, you know, I think deserved, but also, you know, when the, if the school doesn't have much money to go around, it makes me think like back when my professor uh, was in grad school, one could, like I'm in the archeology span department, and so the archeological services used to hire grad students to you know, work, and it would be both, you, know, you get field experience, you go out in the field, you do a dig, you get to experience doing actual archeological digs, but also you make money to pay for your school and rent and food and all of that. But now I hear that grad students cost the at least at UMass where grad students the grad students union is um, one of the like, strongest grad student one of the strong strongest grad student unions in the country but now grad students cost the same to hire as a project archaeologist with an advanced degree mm -hmm. so one this means that grad students aren't getting hired in archaeology anymore and two this means that even once you do de get a degree your rate of pay is the same as a student. Yeah. And like neither of those are great things. Yeah, and that's incredibly frustrating, I know, because especially with like the internship culture that's out there, mm -hmm. um, although internships are super constructive and I definitely um, am a product of internships and I think they're really helpful in your career path and figuring out what you want to do. At the same time, internships are unpaid and if many, especially when it comes to humanities and fine arts. Um, and if you do want that experience, you have to do internships, but then at the same time, you're not getting paid for transportation, for your time and for your effort because internships really aren't going to get coffee and making copies anymore. They are pretty essential to whatever job um, or office you're working in. And I know every experience that I've had, I've been pretty essential on the team, which is great for me, but also kind of sucky because I realize when I graduate um, that I'm not going to be paid that well because they realize that they can hire people in college that will do the same work for free. It's unconscionable. Like that really shouldn't be a thing. Yeah, it shouldn't, but it is. Um, Sean, are you riled up about this at all? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I'm looking forward to doing internships this summer, but yeah, the, that culture definitely exists. Yeah. So it's kind exactly. of rough to be anywhere in the humanities or communication, but. Yeah, I mean, we're biased over here because um, most of us are humanities and fine arts related. Um, but that's not to say that um, the graduate students and all of us deserve to be well paid for our work. Um, so yeah, kind of a downer, but um, that's it for us. And we'll be right back and we're gonna talk about Kevin Spacey. So join us back here. Welcome back to UMass Yakback. So we're going to be talking about Kevin Spacey as if this episode could not get darker in this moment. Um, so with me, I have Joey, Tyler, and Jake. Um, someone want a bullet point and then I can fill in the gaps? Um, yeah, so basically back in 1986 when Kevin Spacey was, I think it was like 24, he was in acting school in New York City with a man or a boy for that matter who was 14 at the time and he they got in some sort of relationship together and he sexually assaulted the kid Anthony Rapp who's actually a pretty famous actor now so it's just terrible stuff to hear all right so I'm gonna confirm and deny some of the inaccuracies in that statement right. um, so Anthony Rapp was 14 at the time we got the ages correct and the, most of the context Anthony Rapp um, actually was famous for his role in Rent, if people don't know who that is. Um, 
Yeah, so Anthony Rapp came out with this article saying that um, 20, 30 years ago, he was invited to a party at Kevin Spacey's house, and he was the only young person there being 14 and everyone else being mid-20s plus. And everyone else left the party. Kevin Spacey got drunk, and um, he forced himself on top of Anthony Rapp. And then Anthony Rapp was like, yo, I'm out, goodbye, and he left. Um, and since that encounter has not seen Kevin Spacey, has avoided him in public circles, um, and has kept quiet about this whole thing because not only um, was Anthony Rapp 14 years old and he couldn't tell his mother about it because he didn't know about his own sexuality, um, but Kevin Spacey was a very well-known person and over the years he's just become more and more well-known, so um, coming out and saying that Kevin Spacey has kind of pulled this on someone is a pretty big thing to do. And, I mean, Anthony Rapp, he doesn't have much to gain in coming out with the story, so you have to kind of take his word for it because he's already famous. There's nothing really there. Um, so, yeah, I can just... And then Kevin Spacey came out with a statement in response to that, so I can read it right now if anybody wants to hear it. And this is controversial in itself. So it says, I have a lot of respect and admiration for Anthony Rapp as an actor. I'm beyond horrified to hear his story. I honestly do not remember the encounter. It would have been over 30 years ago. But if I did behave then as he describes, I owe him the sincerest apology for what would have been deeply inappropriate and drunken behavior. And I'm sorry for the feelings he describes having carried with him all these years. The story has encouraged me to address other things in my life. I know there are stories out there about me and that some have been fueled by the fact that I have been so protective of my privacy. As those closest to me know, in my life I have had relationships with both men and women. I have loved and had romantic encounters with men throughout my life, and I choose now to live as a gay man. I want to deal with this honestly and openly, and that starts with examining my own behavior. All right, thoughts, responses, let's go. Uh, so his response there, really, it's clearly an attempt to take attention away from the accusations by him coming out as gay, which to me is just such a low-down thing to do. Uh, almost like he thinks that being gay somehow excuses his actions, which they don't at all. It was really like initially hearing about the story made me angry, and then he, hearing his response made me so much more angry that he was sort of, I don't know, trying to cover it up by coming out as gay, which, I don't know. Which is really interesting because some people had said that Anthony Rapp like, forced Kevin Spacey out of the closet, and I understand that to a degree, but Kevin Spacey doesn't owe it to anyone to tell them his sexuality, so for him to use it in a statement, it's, it's clearly PR related. It's, it's trying to detract from the fact that he has like come on to different people and that now are more allegations out. It's like Harvey Weinstein all over again, obviously not to the same severity, but it's, it's has been a well-known um, secret in Hollywood that Kevin Spacey is into some weird shit and that he's hit on people working on sets and that he's been very protective of his own sexuality, which is totally fine if you want to be private, but for him to come out with this statement saying that he's gay, it's just like, an excuse for his actions and I've seen a lot of um, social media and stuff that's like oh now like if I get pulled over can I be like oh sorry officer I'm gay um, just to distract from the wrongdoings so um, yeah I think it's pretty crazy um, any other thoughts on the situation yeah I would say you mentioned Harvey Weinstein I would say this is worse than what Harvey Weinstein did because for all the terrible things that he did this, in Kevin Spacey's case, this is a child we're talking yes, about. Yes, that's true. So he's, he's not just a sexual deviant. He is a pedophile. <laughs> Some pretty strong words, but I agree. Jake? Um, I mean, I'm not really a... I haven't been a big Kevin Spacey guy ever, but uh, probably not the best way to handle the situation, I'd say. Yeah. But I don't, know, I don't know if I would go as far to say that he is better than Harvey Weinstein. I mean, is worse. I don't know. It seems a little... It's, it's like severity versus amount. It's yeah. kind of a challenging argument. Yeah. This whole, like, 
past couple weeks in Hollywood have been a complete like circus of just terrible news, and like it's been a total like cluster f, yeah, cluster f, and yeah. now House of Cards is ending, and I don't know, like obviously the article I read, some stuff wasn't true that I read, <laughs> but like you got to really watch what you read, and some of it may not be true. I mean, so maybe some of the accusations out there aren't true, maybe just a call for attention. I'm sure this one is true, just. Uh, you gotta be careful what you read too and what you hear. Yeah, it's crazy. And like, like you had just said, it's really interesting. Fallout House of Cards has decided to suspend production. Um, I believe the original decision was to stop after the next season, and now it's like suspended pr um, production. People are saying, let's kill him off um, and just have his wife um, in the show, Claire Underwood, become president because that would be hella interesting. Um, but yeah, so we're definitely on edge about all of this, and I think I commend Netflix, although it's kind of a PR stunt in a way, because they could probably just do a spin-off and make the same amount of money. Um, good for them for speaking out so soon in the matter. Um, but yeah, that's it for us for this segment. Um, when we come back, we'll be discussing the fallout from Hollow Weekend, so stick around, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We are talking about Hollow Weekend. With us, I have Sarah, Wafi, and Sharon. Um, anybody have something uplifting to say about Hollow Weekend? What did you do? Who did you see? Etc. <laughs> Wafi. Oh, would, me for a damn. Yeah, okay. sure. Um, Why not? Well, um, it was kind of underwhelming only because I like because I love Halloween okay so then like I was like oh my god I'm so excited and then it came and I was like wait why does something feel wrong and then I just kind of felt like people weren't as excited as I expected them to be or maybe I just didn't go to the right places because I went to my first frat party and it was interesting because as soon as I entered I was like oh this must be a sorority but then no, it just turns out that the ratio is all the, all the mess, like it's messed up. It's yeah, like, you're lucky you got in. Yeah, I was like, wait, did they like think I was a girl or something? Because I, <laughs> I was like, it was confusing because I was like, there's no other guys here besides the people that live here, the frat guys. And I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of weird. So I left early. What frat did you go to? Do you remember? Um, I don't remember like the name because I don't understand like the Greek stuff, like the lettering. Yeah. But it's the, near the... Sure. That's not helpful. Like near Newman the Newman Center, it was yeah. either Theta Chi or Phi Six. One of those. I don't know which the one, one on the left. Probably Theta Chi. That one. I like Theta Chi. It's not too bad, but my frat days are over. Um, yeah, I mean, if you don't go to the right place, then yeah. Halloween can be kind of a downer. Did you see any like costumes, like recurring costumes or themes, or anything uh, weird? Like, do you see a lot of girls dressed as this? Um, recurring costume was kind of funny because the costume I had was like a half skull face and I felt like everyone else was doing that. I was like, wait, does everyone else have like skull makeup on? And I was like, okay, this mm -hmm. is kind of awkward. So I just thought it was, because I thought I was the only one that was going to have that on. But all, no. All the basic yeah, plots out there. Exactly. <laughs> they all had the skeleton. <laughs> Me. Oh my but God. yeah, I mean, it is what it is, Wafi. Yeah, I guess so. To some extent. I saw the most recurring costume that I saw, nuns and priests. So what did I do? Oh. I went up to every single one and asked if they were Catholic because I wanted to know. Oh. Every single one was Catholic and confirmed. So <laughs> bless up. <laughs> wow. Um, yes, come Sarah, on. how was your Halloween weekend? It was good. I only went out Friday night for like an hour and a half maybe. And then we got out of there real quick. <laughs> and finish Stranger Things season two, because that's for a different time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was cool. I saw a, lo a lot of group costumes did, like, it, which was actually, like, I would have never thought of that, but yeah. it's really good, because all you need is, like, a rain jacket and the balloon. Mm -hmm. But it was all girls who dressed as Georgie, which, like, 
like I would have dressed as him yeah. too, but like I thought it was interesting that no guy felt inclined to dress as a young child with the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just just love being a, a young child. Oh my um, God. <laughs> was Friday night the night you dressed up um, as eleven? Yes. Very nice, oh, very yeah. nice. Um, Sharon, Halloween. Um, yeah, it was a pretty good weekend. Um, so my friends and I, we marathon Stranger Things, and, but we wanted to make a drinking game out of it. And okay. I won't do any spoilers. So we take a shot every time Dustin growls. You know, he like you know, when he purrs because he has like he got his braces. He had, like he has teeth now. Um, every time <laughs> Eleven has a nosebleed. Every time Eleven says home. Um, and what else? Bob. Whenever Bob appears. Huh. So, and we only made it up from episode one to episode five, and we were like already gone because they kept on happening, huh. like repeat, repeatedly. So, and yeah, that was my night. Huh. I've played a similar game with Harry Potter. Whenever Dobby refers to Harry Potter, his full name, I don't know. <laughs> But um, yeah, my, my weekend was pretty good. Um, I went out three out of four, well, four nights of a weekend. That's pretty sad that I just said that. Um, <laughs> but I went to this place called The Flip. Have any of you heard oh, of it? Oh yeah, I know people that went there, yeah. Yeah, so The Flip is pretty cool. It's kind of an underground thing, but um, it's a house in the area and they host local bands like, I don't know, once a month or once every few months. And they only do it every so often, kind of like a pop-up shop in a way so that they don't get busted by the cops every single time. Um, and it's really cool and super cliche alternative, but it was super fun and you pay a $5 cover charge and you get to drink from a keg all night, so that was pretty lit. Um, but yeah, some weird costumes out there. Um, anybody see something surprising or unexpected? I saw a dinosaur on campus. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They went to Burke, that was pretty funny. Did anyone see um, people dressed up in costumes on Halloween on campus, and if you did, what did you see? I did. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. What did you Because I was like, cause I, I didn't, initially, because I, I have a morning class on that day, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'll just go. And I saw people in costumes like really early, and I was like, oh. So I went back to my dorm and put on, like, because um, I had like these Snapchat filter thingies, because yeah. that was my costume idea. So I yeah. put Snapchat dog ears, and then I had like the flower crown, and I had painted like a rainbow vomit on my oh, face that's so cute. and I just walked around campus and pe surprisingly people didn't stop me they were just like <laughs> just like looking I was like okay I guess this is normal then so I just yeah. very, went ahead with very it. Massachusetts yeah I guess <laughs> yeah um I saw a girl dressed as Buzz Lightyear wow. and then I was in South College um which is like English department so many people that just wore capes and I'm like I don't know if this is like an English major thing or, <laughs> okay. like because these people are basically witches like I'm an English major too so it's fine um, oh or God. if it's just like a Halloween thing I wasn't too sure about that um, and then when I walked home last night it's as we all know it's been getting darker a lot earlier which is not great for me um, but I mean I do come into my true form at night so like I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I was walking home last night, and um, or on Halloween, I'm sorry, and some kid just like ran at me and just did like the Hannibal Lecter um, like like tongue uh, thing. I'm not gonna replicate it because it's too gross to hear. And I was just like, great. I love Massachusetts. I love this school. <laughs> I'm going home. Good night, everybody. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, that's my weird experience, and I'm sorry this episode went every which way. But um, that's how we do it here at Yak Back. So join us next week, and it will be it'll be pretty spooky. <laughs> See you next week.